Hello and welcome to CVD's models. In this video I'm going to build up this kit by Airfix. It's a vintage classic or you could say a recycled old tap. It's a Commonwealth CA 13 Boomerang. Now this the tooling for this kit was first made in 1965. I actually I remember building this kit as a kid. Uh, I don't think it got painted then though. Uh, there's not many parts to it, I think there's only about, um, yeah, there's uh, 27 parts to this kit. It didn't take me long to build it. For the interior, you just get a pallet on a seat, um, like kits from of old. Um, I've not sanded off all the riveting and what have you, because it's, uh, you know, I know I say uh, recycled all the time, but it is a class. it is vintage, and that's how... In, 60, in the 60s and early 70s that's how models were made you know with a uh, raised detail anyway so hope you enjoy the build okay so welcome to this build of this uh airfix vintage classic commonwealth ca13 boomerang um i've already opened the box and had a look at the plastic i've washed the plastic because i'm going to make it instructions Small bag of sprues, a uh, small bag with uh, clear pipes in, and the transfers. You can get it out. Okay. So, yeah, vintage classic pipes are always like this. There's not many pipes to this aircraft. Got raised panel lines. Hear it? Raised rivet detail. It looks nice, to be fair. Uh, fuse large has no detail inside. inside. Uh, you glue the pilot's chair onto those two stubs with the pilot on it, so that's what we'll do. Interesting. And then there's a uh, undercarriage leg broke off there. And the propeller with propeller boss built in. Uh, not much detail on the engine, unfortunately. You get air jog exhaust. Uh, Pallet doesn't even look too clever, to be fair. But anyway, we'll get on with it and see what it looks like. I'm going to paint it in uh, Tamiya colours XF5 for the green, for the matte dark green, and XF10 the matte chocolate but that's what it says it should be it's I'm going to be producing this one with the white tail which is number four squadron in my australian air force goose app new guinea in february 44 It says there that the original Royal Cross artwork had the tip of the tail painted in blue. As you can see, that's blue there, but, it, but that's a mistake. It should be in the chocolate brown. Okay. Um, not many instruction parts. So first of all, I'll paint it interior green, get the pilot painted up and get him in and get the fuselage close together and do the engine. Uh, it doesn't give you any idea on what's paint colours on the inside, as you can see. Uh, it looks like there's quite a few stencils as well. I bet they weren't, they weren't with the original kit. Uh, you can get all them with the original kit. I don't remember, you've just got the uh, roundels and stuff. Anyway, <coughs> let's get on with it. Okay, the uh, pilot is painted 
not my best effort, but there's not much detail on this guy. Uh, I can now put him in his chair and the fuselage, get the fuselage glued together, and that's all I wanted to do. And then move on with the model. Okay, right, so moving on. Okay, so I've glued the fuselage halves together. Pilot's in his seat. And that it's going to need a sanding along the seam because it's got a raised edge. And underneath it's not too bad. But there's like. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but it needs. You know, this side of the fuselage is a bit, little bit longer than this side of the rudder. So I'm sorting out. Um, I have glued the wings together as well. And they need sanding. And I'm going to drill two little holes as well for the three or threes that went in there. And again, that edge needs sanding off. No, this side's not as bad. But the fit of the wing to the fuselage isn't all that brilliant. It will need filler, I think. And the edge will need sanding down a little bit. Anyway, we'll see how we get on. I've uh, painted up the engine. Because that needs to go. Okay, in. so moving on, I've uh, glued on the tail the stabilizers. Uh, they needed the sand before I, I put, before I glued them on, otherwise they didn't fit properly. But they've gone in all right. And what I've done is I've I'm going to put the engine on now. And what I've done is I've put a piece of stretch brew, glued a piece of stretch brew behind the spinner. So the spinner is now spinning. So when I put the um, propeller on, I press up. Uh, it will go around, hopefully. And I painted inside the uh, cowl interior green. And that fits okay. So that shouldn't foul the front, and it doesn't, so that's next to be glued in. At least one that glue for this, I think. Why has it got that big hole? Can you see that big hole there? Okay, so that needs a sand there. That bit needs sand in there because oh, it's not stopping the fit. But the edge and cowl that doesn't come out as far as the wing. Huh? So.
that's bad now, I still need some filler, but this needs uh, sanding here. These little bits of flash. Okay, so on. Uh, wings are on. I used some tape to uh, pull up the wings so that there weren't a really big gap in between the wing roots and the fuselage. Uh, still want some filler down because it just don't look right. It needs some filler in, I think. I'll put, so I'll put some Vallejo filler in. I've drilled some holes for the 303s that were in the wings. And yeah, so this area is pretty poor where it on the carriage goes. But not to worry about that, we'll just uh, paint it interior green. I'll, I'll, paint, I'll do that after I've done the blue, I think. Um, the two holes need filling, I'm not putting the tank on. And <laughs> I don't know what this is here. Maybe that's where the, uh, where the stand used to go. Well, that needs filling as well. So uh, that's next, I'll do the filling bit next. And uh, some tidying up round here with a sanding stick. Okay. Uh, okay. So the uh, this little aeroplane is all together now. Of the canopy, the on the canopy, the panel lines are really poorly defined. So I've done the best I can with little pieces of a uh, tape. And I've glued it in. Um, I put a little bit of filler, uh, the layer of acrylic filler, in the wing roots there, and where the engine connects here. Uh, sand it, I've had to sand that bit down to uh, get it uh, level. Um, as you can see, I filled in the hole for the drop tank or whatever it is there, and that massive hole that was here, and that's with. Uh, Revel filler and sanded it down so it's nice and smooth. So uh, it's got no need to uh, give it a primer. And I'm going to prime it with a surface primer, but first of all, I'm going to paint the canopy interior green. So you know, it's got the interior green that it would have, I think. So yeah. Paint it, I'm going to give it a primer with black and then the tail section uh, to me X2, XF2 underneath XF23 light blue because it says aircraft uh, sky blue. So I've converted 65 using a conversion chart, and that's what it says user 23. Uh, the green will be XF5 flat green and the brown is uh, flat brown XF10 uh, oh yeah I need to put a piece of a uh, foam in there I'll okay um, as you can see it's uh, all sprayed up black primer all the uh, riz rivets and stuff look really cool now don't they I suppose if uh, these were in scale, they'd probably stand up about six inches above the airframe. Anyway, that's by the by. It's a kit. When was it? When was it first done? Nineteen sixty-five. So that's how old now. Nearly 60 years old. <laughs> 58 years old. Okay, so what I'm going to do now <coughs> is uh, spray the tail white with a smear flat white. XF1, XF2. Okay, so in the airbrush now it's got uh, smear XF2 white, matte white. Flat white and a bit of X20 air mixed to be about 50 50. Uh, 
And we'll just give it a light coat of a shot. Okay, so <clears throat> I'll let it dry overnight as I'll be masking it in the morning and I want it to be hard enough uh, to be masked safely. Alright, so, so the next colour will be the light blue underneath. Okay, seconds. I've uh, masked up the tail ready for uh, the main painting now so some, uh, let's get some light blue on underneath and then we can mask this up as well
I clear that saw. Sort of. I've left it so it looks patchy, you know, so that bit bit of variation instead of just light aircraft blue everywhere. So that needs to uh, harden up, then we can mask it and get it painted up, get the green and brown on. Okay, so I've uh, masked up the edges. I know it's going to get painted in uh, to me at XF5 flat but green. So I've uh, thinned it a little bit with uh, to me a X22A. So that's so the green on, leave that to dry and then we can mask it up for the brain. Sure. Okay so the green, the, the green is painted, it's on the aircraft. Um, to do the camouflage I've got this from Amazon, Smart Putty, I think it cost me £8. I was going to get some uh, AK, uh, that masking putty, but that were a tenner and then another tenner post and packing, so I didn't bother with that, so I got this because it was free delivery and I put it on the aircraft. So it looks like. <laughs> so it's time to get the uh, brown sprayed on, which is this XF10, black brown from Tamiya. Already put it in the airbrush. The instructions out the way. <coughs> Getting sprayed on there. I think I should have done the brown first before the green, but
Job <coughs> tip of the uh, sail plan. <coughs> okay, so I'll, we'll remove the buskin when it's the paint's dried a bit. Let's kind of take some of this uh, stuff off. Cool. Roughly right, isn't it? That brown looks a bit darker than this up, this off, but okay, yeah. So that's a smart putty from Glow House. Colour changing, apparently. Iridescent, it indigo. <laughs> It's got a bit of brain going on there. <laughs> I'm a bit disappointed about how much you get. It's usually, if you're gonna get, you should get a tin full from really, shouldn't you? Anyway, eight pound, I think it cost me. Okay, and there's the completed model. Um, tell you some history about it. This aircraft was uh, descri often described as Australia's panic fi fighter, <coughs> and it was the, the, it was uh, built because of the uh, Japanese aggression in the Pacific. Um, there were 250 of these aircraft made, and they had really good low altitude uh, performance. And the boomerang was often described by other air <coughs> aircraft, mainly Corsairs, as uh, Smoky job because of their, their ability to uh, mark a target for them. Anyway, I hope that you uh, like this little aircraft and uh, we'll come back to the uh, to me. Hi, uh, so there you have it. Uh, nice little kit. Hope you've enjoyed the build. If you have, please give me a like, a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you wouldn't, if you'd be so kind, and to all those new subscribers that have uh, subscribed recently, thanks very much. And I hope you enjoy the videos. And the next up, next up <coughs> that I'm going to build is another vintage classic or recycled altar. It's a Westland Whirlwind HAS22 the artwork is by Roy Cross and in this kit <coughs> the tooling for this kit is 1956 the year I was born so it's 66 years old in this model and uh, Roy Cross did the artwork in 1974 so uh, you know, hope you watch that one. Okay, so this is Stevie D signing off for now. Uh, thanks for watching, especially if you got this far. And uh, thanks for watching. Yeah, uh, cheerio. Bye bye. See you in the next video. <laughs>